Hello everyone, welcome back to another video where today we're going to be going over the latest details from Doctor Who magazine. Obviously the bulk of this issue is dedicated to Sarah Jane Smith, Elizabeth Sladen, so obviously I won't be reading all of those details and I would encourage you to pick up the magazine yourself. I'm just going to be picking out a couple of things that I found interesting in this magazine, but of course feel free to actually pick up the magazine if you get the chance or if you are able to. But before we get into it, if you could do me a teeny tiny little favour and click that subscribe button, it would be very much appreciated. We are trying to get to 20,000 subscribers as soon as possible, and I would just love it if we could get there. I also have a Ko-fi, so if you'd like to support me and the channel, it would be very much appreciated. But with that said, let's get into the video. So the magazine opens up with a nice write-up about the main purpose of the issue, to talk about, obviously, Sarah Jane and all that sort of stuff. But then, on the very next page, we get a spread on the new directors, both Julianne Robinson and Ben Chessel, who were sort of spoken about in yesterday's video. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the corner, whatever corner it is, to go watch that video. But yeah, very exciting to see some newly confirmed directors. And then we get the letter from the showrunner segment, in which RTD goes over the detail of getting Sarah Jane Adventures on BBC iPlayer, specifically Curse of Clyde Langer. If any of you remember, there were some issues getting that episode on there. And it's a really interesting read, so I suggest reading that. Obviously, apparently, according to Russell, the CBBC team were planning on putting Sarah Jane on iPlayer anyway, and they were just told later on, so it wasn't actually Russell's decision, but they were sort of helping out with getting the issues with Curse of Clyde Lager sorted. They also talk about the cover and the details surrounding that. It's a really nice little write-up from Russell on Sarah Jane Smith. Nice to see. And then we get the production diary from Scott Hancock, which gives us some really interesting little details. You know, I won't read all of them, but there's a lot of interesting little things that I love to sort of dissect in these. One of the interesting things is they make reference to a composer. It says, Draft 6, our first Block 3 episode, is issued to all the crew, followed by a meeting with Andy Pryor to discuss casting thoughts for the Block's second episode. Meanwhile, the Block 2 team catch up with our composer, and the locations department begin breaking down scripts for Block 4. So yeah, nice to know that like there is a composer. We don't know who that is yet, but I'm going to be interested to see who that is. There's also a reference of another writer somewhere, implying obviously Russell isn't doing the whole series, which I think we could assume it anyway, but that's pretty cool. As well as various read-throughs, marketing strategies, all that sort of stuff. Very, very interesting. And then we get the full write-up on the Sarah Jane Adventures, which is really, really nice, as well as interviews with the various cast members from the show. Obviously, this is lovely for me because I grew up with Sarah Jane Adventures, so this is absolutely wonderful. And then we get to this, which is Cyan Rainish. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, feel free to correct me. It's her bit on being a VFX coordinator. And it's interesting because she was actually a runner on Invasion of the Bane. That's how she started out in the Doctor Who world. And now she's the VFX coordinator. But she gives a very interesting quote, which some people have shared, that says, what excites you about the future of the show visually? And then she says, we're using top of the range technology, the kind that Marvel films use to make Doctor Who in Wales, which I think is pretty spectacular. It means Doctor Who is at the forefront of pushing boundaries. And in the set Christmas special, we're shooting with drones on the set, which no one has done before, because the way the Doctor races erratically around the TARDIS, it's amazing to have those sorts of shots. So it's gonna be amazing to have drone shots in the TARDIS, and Marvel-style visuals. It's very exciting what Marvel, you know, level, budget, and technique is very, very exciting to see. That does also kind of uh, cooperate with the stories about, you know, obviously, increased budget, something that, you know, Russell T. Davis has been very excited about. And obviously, she gives him thoughts on Shooty Gatwa as well, which is very cool. And then we get to the ongoing 14th Doctor comic story. Obviously, I won't go into huge details, but they expand on the Dalek arena that some of you might remember from the previous sort of videos I've done on the magazine. Basically, there's a Dalek sort of, I guess, tourist attraction that shows their various wars throughout history. And yeah, there's some really cool little details here and it's really fun. And I'm looking forward to see where this story goes. And yeah, in case you're curious, here's what the new VFX coordinator says about shooting Gatwa in the role. I think he'll bring such a new dynamic. He's young and fun. The crews say he's up for anything. And I think he'll really make it his own and not try to copy the mannerisms of anyone else. He's really individual, and that's what we want. A new, new Doctor, which I'm really excited to see. We need a completely new take after Ted. Obviously, I'm looking forward to seeing Ted come back, 
but I am ready for a new take after that. And it looks like that's exactly what Shizu Gatwa will deliver, which is very exciting to see. There was also some posts via Millie Gibson of her doing a read through and everyone's tried to dissect these images and it's just got the, the barcode, which is fun. And everyone's saying that that's the episode title, which I think is really fun, uh, even though obviously it's not. And then yeah, Block 3 director Tobias Danton was confirmed in the St. David's Day social media post. Obviously, for those of you who don't know, the Doctor Who official account did a celebratory post for St. David's Day and one of the people who was confirmed was Tobias Dayton, who was the Block 3 director of photography. So that's very cool. But yeah, let me know about your thoughts about anything we discussed today. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below your thoughts, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you later.